the Pen EMD, definitely one of the worst processors made by Intel. The first of which was released in 2005 as an answer to AMD's dual core processors. You see, Intel at the time was not doing so well. They devoted so much time and money towards their netburst architecture that they were a bit behind the times. The netburst architecture looked pretty good on paper, but in the real world, it didn't quite pan out. The chips using it were the Pentium 4s. They ran hot, used a lot of power, and really weren't that fast. They actually benched worse than AMD's dual core offerings of the time, which were clocked lower, used less power, and ran cooler. Intel had no choice but to make a temporary chip to get them by until they had something better. And that temporary chip was the Pentium D. It literally was two Pentium 4 dies on a single chip. This wasn't a true dual core as it was more like a dual processor, but without the second processor. The benefit of a multi-core CPU is that any communication between the cores can be done within the CPU itself, so it's very fast. This is not the case with the Pentium D. With a dual core processor and or the Pentium D, the communication has to be done over the motherboard, usually the front side bus. Imagine instead of responding to a friend via text, you had to get in your car and drive to their house just to say yes. That's sort of what happens with a dual processor. That's what the Pentium D had to do. Also, each Pentium die didn't have the luxury of its own socket. They had to share the same one. Because of this, memory bandwidth suffered, as well as the CPU having a very high power draw and got very hot. As a side note, in the mid-2000s while I was working in IT, we had a, a client who had a mixture of Pentium 4 and Pentium D PCs. All the PCs looked identical, so the only way to really tell was to look at the system info. One thing we all noticed that you really couldn't tell the difference between the two. In everyday use, they performed about the same. For this video, we'll be comparing a two 2.8 gigahertz Pentium D against a 3.1 gigahertz hyper-threaded Pentium 4. First, we'll run a couple benchmarks and see how they stack up, and then a couple games just to see if it improves, you know, gaming performance any. So first up, a quick 7-zip comparison. The results are very close, and it seems as though 7-zip uses both threads to compress a single file. This can be a problem because one thread will have to wait until the other has finished its task before they can both continue. Regardless, the Pentium D was about 19% faster. Next up, Cinebench. Cinebench does do a true multi-threaded benchmark, and as you can see, the Pentium D does pull ahead quite a bit. As far as time goes, it was about 53% faster, with a Cinebench score of 307, while the Pentium 4 score was 200. Now moving on to video encoding. I used Handbrake with the 1080p fast defaults, uh, using CPU encoding only. These CPUs were never designed with H.264 encoding in mind, but regardless, the Pentium D finished first at 2 hours 10 minutes, while the Pentium 4 lagged behind at 3 hours 24 minutes. So the Pentium D was actually around 57% faster. As far as games, the first is GTA San Andreas, as it was out around the time of these processors. I played on both chips and chose the segment to show as an example. The Pentium D definitely had a higher frame rate, although not by much. The Pentium D frame rate also seemed to jump around quite a bit, and you would see frame rates bounce between 18 to 30 FPS, while the Pentium 4 was fairly consistent around 15 to 20, usually averaging around 18 FPS. Something a bit more challenging was GTA 4. This game had a hard time running on any computer of its time. As always, I used the same settings across both CPUs and neither were great. In my own time, I did set the graphics settings even lower, but that didn't seem to pick up much performance, so I left the texture settings to high and the draw distance and density to low. You can see here that the Pentium D does increase the frame rate, but only by about 10 FPS. 10 FPS, however, does make the game go from being completely unplayable to, I don't know, I guess manageable. Running the GTA 4 benchmark shows this frame rate issue. While neither were great, the Pentium D at least kept, I don't know, moving. The Pentium 4 would constantly stall and appeared like a slideshow. The results show an average FPS of 10.5 for the Pentium D and 6.5 for the Pentium 4. GTA 5 on the Pentium 4 wouldn't even load. It just sat at the loading screen for well over an hour. I tried multiple times and I think it has something to do with the Rockstar game loader not fully loading or syncing. Regardless, the Pentium D did a lot better than I expected. It did take about 10 minutes to load the game, and but once it was loaded, it seemed decent. That was until I started moving around. The CPU just couldn't load objects and textures fast enough. As you can see in the distance, I think those things floating in the sky are supposed to be trees. Even though the frame rate is okay, all things considered, it seems to be somewhat playable. That is until you get into a car. The road and other objects just disappear, as again, the CPU just can't load them fast enough. The higher than expected frame rate though, says less about the CPU and, and more about how well the designers and programmers built and optimized this game. 
Portal 2. Yeah, this game's a masterpiece. Not only is it just an incredible game to play, but it also looks great and it'll run on just about anything. During the final fight with Wheatley, the Pentium D hardly ever went below 30 FPS and often peaked around 50. The Pentium 4, still very playable, often hanging around the mid-20s. So was the Pentium D actually worth it? You may be saying, well, at least it's something. But here's something I haven't showed you yet. Here are the idle temps from the motherboard's bias. Remember, I used the same heatsink for both CPUs. The Pentium 4 is idling around 48 degrees. And the Pentium D, when tested, idles around 63 degrees. Now remember these numbers. I re-ran Handbrake for each and after a while captured these clips. After around four minutes of rendering at 100% usage, the Pentium 4 is sitting around a stable 62 degrees Celsius. That's the idle temp of the Pentium D. Now let's look at how the Pentium D did. Same scenario, but the Pentium D is sitting at a stable 80 degrees Celsius. 80 degrees. Now remember this motherboard is sitting on a bench with no restrictions and all the air it can get and it's reaching 80 degrees. Imagine putting this into a mid 2000s beige case with poor ventilation or a Dell Optiplex clamshell. Ugh. So it sounded good. A Pentium 4 with essentially a second processor on board up to a 60% performance increase. Now, 60% isn't much, but hey, it's something. But then you look at all the drawbacks. Using about as much power as two AMD PCs of its time and insanely high temperatures that will only get worse as the case fills up with dust. Oh, and all this in your computer would still be considered slower than its competition. Yeah, it was a dark time for Intel. I plan on putting these claims to the test and benchmarking this CPU against AMD's offerings of its time in future videos, as well as many other comparisons. So if you've made it this far, I thank you for watching and remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.